Oh, not this time, guys. Not this time. I'm going to enter the fight right away. <laughs> Remember when that Latios drowned when I was trying to show you our special memento Pokemon here? I didn't think you would remember, but I remember. It was brutal. Anyways, this is the time. So Yuxi's another one of these guys that can learn Memento, which basically kills itself. And we want to catch him. We don't want it to kill itself. So what we do is we hit Imprison. All right, we used Imprison. Sealed his moves. Oh, and he did have it. So if he has it, it tells you. Yuxi's Memento is disabled, so it can't kill itself now. Amazing, right? And that lasts the whole fight. Then we can Thunder Wave it. So he gets paralyzed and he misses some attacks and whatnot. We hit False Swipe to lower its HP down to where we can catch him. It's like an all-in-one super Pokemon here. It's amazing. Oh, he has rest. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why? It's so... So evil when they have two evil moves in their move set. Memento with rest. Great. This is gonna be fun. This is gonna take a while. Ah, oh, he killed himself. Ah, oh, this guy. He ran out of PP and struggled. It's <laughs> so evil. I should have just used the Master Ball. I, I just, like, the, it was a good idea, this Memento guy did what he was supposed to, but I just got unlucky in that fight. I just couldn't catch him for some reason. Okay, guys, so we got something pretty cool here as well. Another legendary has spawned. Tornadus only spawns when it's raining, in the afternoon, and in the plains, so it's kind of a rare guy. He's either giant or enormous, so that's kind of cool, but there's one other really big thing about this guy. And I'm going to use a Master Ball on it just to guarantee we get it. Because I tried to fight him for a while already and, like, it didn't go well. <laughs> so, like, half my team died and he almost ran out of PP. So I decided just to exit the fight and uh, get him with a Master Ball. So check this out. Okay, it's huge. It's not giant or enormous. Oh, it's naughty! No, the nature didn't sink. An attack is usually not what you want on this guy. Here's the big thing, though. Defiant, it has the hidden ability on a legendary. That's, like, extremely hard to get. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to be a very good one. We got Unlucky. Let's check out his IVs. That's the last little thing. Oh, they would have been good, too. Well, pretty good. Not, not the best. It's missing a little bit of special attack. But that's not bad. Uh-huh, so what has been happening here on the Pixelmon server, guys? What have we been doing? Well, let me tell you. Let me give you a little update. Um, a lot of the same stuff. <laughs> we've been uh, we've been breeding up Pokemon. We've been hatching eggs, hoping we get something good out of those eggs. Hopefully a ginormous Pokemon for our collection. Then we, if we somehow get lucky and get one, we EV train it, we level it up, we put moves on it and then add it to our collection and hopefully battle with it sometime in the future. Um, a lot of that, a lot of rinse and repeats. Uh, so if you're wondering why there hasn't been as many episodes out for the Pixelmon series, I know some of you really liked it. It's because uh, we've kind of done everything, all the unique content with Pixelmon. <laughs> so uh, I haven't been uploading as much of it, but you know, it, it sounds like it's repetitive and boring, but it's not. I actually really enjoy uh, Pixelmon still or Pokemon. I, I knew almost nothing about it before I started on the server here. And now I've, I've grown to really enjoy the depth of it and the battling aspect of, of Pokemon. Um, uh huh. I bred this up to sell to somebody. So let's. For sale. Let's, let's do that so I don't lose it. Because it's not, it's not ginormous. We're not keeping it. That's garbage. But somebody else. It, my, my garbage is someone else's treasure, right? This one, though. Okay, we did get ginormous on that. That's great. Look at those EVs. You know what that means? We can put hidden power fire on him. That is the dream. Is it regenerator? It is. Okay, so that's good. We got the, that guy bred up. Uh, this needs to be female, so we trash that. Uh-huh. But with that being said, guys, even though, uh, like, preparing Pokemon and battling are pretty much all I do on the server now... <laughs> 
<laughs> We're not going to do that this whole episode. I have thought of some ideas of things we can do. Um, first off, though, I just want to give you a recap of that OU Draft League. You remember that? I, I showed a few battles from that. Um, we ended up going five wins, three losses. I'm not sure if it's officially over. There's four more games I can play. Uh, I still need to play two games with Nevers and two with Stenstone. Um, so I could potentially bring this up to nine wins, three losses at best. But yeah, this is where we're standing right now. We won three games versus Kaysen. Uh We won one game with Sten, lost the game to Nebris, and then I won one versus Dave or Finasu, as he goes by, uh, and lost two to him. So this was our team, these 10 Pokemon here. Uh, very powerful Pokemon, but one of the big problems I found with this team is we had a major ice and steel weakness on our team because we had a lot of fairy types so it was steel weak and like Celamance is four times it's four times weak to ice right Moongus is weak to ice Landorus is four times weak to ice uh Diancy's neutral I think I think Thunderous is two times weak to ice so Tapu Bulu is two times weak to ice so that was a big problem <laughs> basically people could just load up ice moves on their Pokemon and it was kind of hard to deal with um so one big issue we had with that draft league, the first season of it, is half the people. We had like nine people in it, and half of them kind of got busy with other things and like quit playing on the server before we even started. So we also have like four or five new people on the server. So we decided to start up a second season here and just cut the first one short. So we've drafted new teams. So this is all done with. Um, this is going to be my new team down here. Got Mega Metacham, super powerful Pokemon. Um, Tapu Coco. Luckily, I w I got the first pick this time, so I went for Coco right off the bat. That was my first pick. And Drachi, Celestela, Tangrowth. We just bred up an HP Fire one. I want to breed up an HP Ice one as well. Uh, Flygon, regular Hoopa, Quagsire again, even though I never used it. <laughs> uh, Ar Archeops and Clink Clank. Are my 10 Pokemon this time. So thankfully, I think I avoided any major weaknesses, like like we had a big ice weakness before. I think I drafted a little bit better this time, even though I think the overall power level is a lot lower. Uh, I, I'm more happy with this team down here, I think. Uh-huh. So we did it with a, a point system as well. We were allowed like three from a tier one grouping. There, there was five tiers of Pokemon where we had to like pick Pokemon from all the tiers. So that's why some of these guys are like really low power. Um, compared to other ones. So, like, these... Coco's a Tier 1 pick, while, like, Quagsire is a Tier 5. Same with Clink Clank. But I had to pick a few of those, right? So that's kind of why we, we have a team like this. Now, uh, this time around, we're also going to be doing scheduled fights, which will bring a little bit more order to the thing. Um, and we have, like... We have to do them within a certain time. So the first person we're facing is Sten. Sten Stone. This is his team. Megalopunny, Curum Black, Heatran, Toxpex, Landorus, T. Those first five, man, whew. <laughs> they are brutal. Uh, but then the other five are a lot weaker, thankfully. Those are his lower tier picks. Um, but yeah, we have to somehow beat six of his Pokemon from this. I'm guessing he's going to take these five, his five good ones for sure. And then like one of these guys down here. Um, we have to put together a team that can beat it from these ten, though. So that's that's what I'm working on, and we gotta like prepare them too. Like I gotta level this guy up to 100. We need that HP Ice Tangla. Uh, I did breed up this guy. Perfect. Look at that. Perfect. Even ginormous. This is the first ginormous Pokemon I've been able to breed that has perfect stats. So that was kind of cool. But anyways, let's get to doing some stuff here. So one idea I've had for quite a while is to make like a mob system in Pixelmon. Um, to try find hidden abilities. So that's one thing I spend a lot of time on. Something I enjoy doing. But there's a couple guys. It's just ridiculous with. They're so rare. <laughs> we need to up the ante a little bit. Like what I'll do is I'll fly to an area like this. And like I don't have the hidden ability on this guy for example. So I'll, I'll check any of that spawn. We're looking for skill link. But it's a 1 in 150 chance. So it's very unlikely to get him. But what happens is, like, maybe 20 Pokemon will spawn, and then the mob cap is reached, right? And no more will spawn until you leave the area. So then you got to fly away, like, 100, over 100 blocks, I think. 
So you fly away and then you can approach again and then you'll get like another 20. So it's like extremely slow. <laughs> it's not very easy to find hidden abilities when something's rare. So the plan is we're going to try to build a mob system to uh, automate the process of them spawning in and like killing them. Hopefully. We'll see how it works. Like I don't know if it's even possible in Pixelmon, how, how, how good it is, it's going to be. But Nebris had an idea of what might make it work. Like, for example, one of the Pokemon that can spawn here in the jungle is Litten. And I really want the hidden ability Intimidate on him. Right? But this guy is super rare. Nebris had the idea of maybe using Lava to get this guy. Because he's a fire type. And apparently fire type Pokemon don't... They don't burn up in Lava. Uh, while other guys do. That spawn here. So that's one way we can like maybe get Litten. All right, all right. This could be it, guys. Oh yeah, look, he's bigger than the, our Mew. This might be an enormous Coco. Oh boy, Spark, Wild Charge, and Brave Bird. Brave Bird and Wild Charge injure itself when when it attacks. So I'm a little worried it's gonna kill itself. I think we're just gonna go right for the Master Ball. I've been throwing Master Balls away like crazy. <laughs> I'm almost out of them. But I'm pretty sure this is an enormous one. I'm not taking the chance of it sudoku itself. There will be no crossword puzzles without my permission. Wait, where's my PC? I keep using my fishing rod. There it is. Oh, it's only giants? No! <laughs> I thought for sure. Oh, man. Not, it's not too bad of one, though, at least. All right, so we got to design a mob system to get lit in here. Uh, it would be nice to get the hidden ability on Trico as well, but I'm, I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Let's just see if we can make something for the fire types first, because we need Infernape and to pig as well, and I think a couple other fire types we don't have the hidden abilities for. Um, so my first question is, can we make a mob system using magma blocks? Because that would be really simple. So let's see if he takes fire damage. Doesn't. Okay, that's good. What about Trico? It does. Oh. Okay, so that could potentially work. Uh, I think... Let's look at the health on our Trace Pokemon here. So it's like 1 HP every damage tick. What about like in Lava? Do they take more damage? Oh. Look at this fool. You walked right into it. <laughs> Alright. Oh, it is. They take four, 4 HP every damage tick in Lava compared to 1 uh, on this. Oh, he spawned at the end of the leaves again. Okay, so I'm thinking they don't spawn on Magma Blocks, unfortunately. That would have been really simple just to build a big platform of them. Have the Pokemon spawn on top and die, like if it's not a fire type. But it looks like we're going to have to spawn them and push them off into lava or something instead. Yeah, so our goal is to spawn in a bunch of Pokemon, knock them off a platform into lava, have only the fire ones remain. Right? I think that's the, the simplest thing to this. So how do we knock them off the platform is the question. Uh, one idea I want to experiment with... Like, we can always just use pistons. That's always an option. But I'm curious if uh, any of these other ideas will be good. So there's an item called Repel in... Pixelmon, I haven't used it before, but apparently it makes the the Pokemon stay away. I don't know if that makes them run away. I was kind of hoping that they would just like woof, take off, you know, <laughs> run off the platform into lava if if I got close to them. It doesn't seem like it works that way. Okay, so that idea is off the table. Another idea uh, Tilted figured out is if you throw snowballs at the Pokemon. They become aggressive towards you, and they will they will move to get you, right? So I'm wondering, can we use snow golems, maybe? Will you will you see them as enemies? Throw a snowball at that guy. Do it! No, okay, so these guys are neutral to snow golems. Because we could have had, like, a bunch of these guys throwing snowballs at them to make them run off the platform. Looks like that's not an option, though. Oh no, uh, we're just like swinging and missing here, like nothing's working. So I tried this, and like when they spawn in, they don't move. Th they only move if we get really close to them. Um, 
what I was going to do is try to just put trap doors between platforms and they should see that as a block they can walk on and then they'll just fall down uh, like we do in normal mob systems but doesn't really work with these guys they barely move God of War. even when I'm right by him like he's just gonna stand there yeah he's, he's not moving so I think we have to use pistons or water or something like that we can't use minecarts for a mob system because they also have an issue if you get too far away from them they, they kind of stop moving Oh, snap. Another Uxie, guys. Another chance with our memento. He might be giant. He might be enormous. He's a big guy. We'll see. Okay, we sealed his moves. This one does not have memento. It didn't give us the memento message. So we are free to go to this guy to see what he actually has. Future sight. Rest. Oh, this one has rest as well. We can deal with that, though. If he doesn't have a combination of both memento and rest, it's a lot easier because we can just go to Shedinja. And we have heal block on this guy, so we can stop stop this guy from resting. Oh, and we got it. Nice. Okay, is it a big guy? I know he's a little guy, but is he a, a big little guy is the question. Let's check it out. Okay. Oh, I was only giant. <laughs> no, man. All right, we're not done catching Uxies. We still need more. Those are good stats, though. Those are pretty good. All right, well, I think we're going to try out this pattern for the mob system. So they'll spawn on the dirt here, and hopefully the pistons will push them off down into some water, which will gather them together and then drop them in some lava is the plan. We'll start the next row here. And I know... Uh, the Pokemon don't spawn on wood or on planks, so we're going to put that above the pistons so they don't spawn on top. And this will be too high that way so they can't jump up and, and get stuck. So I think that'll be good. And then we just run redstone over top this, I think, although that might bud power the pistons. Uh-oh, i got to think about this a bit more. <laughs> Maybe this won't work. Uh, let's see what happens. Um, we're not going to use trip wires or anything like that. We'll put it on a clock, probably. Because one big issue is the Pokemon are all different sizes. So it's going to be hard to detect them. Um, that should be fine, right? Yeah, that's all good. Okay, cool. Um, the other thing is we can't stack these vertically. Uh, the Pokemon needs sunlight, like direct sunlight to spawn. So we can't put like another row below this or above it or anything like that. So that's another constraint, which means this has to spread out horizontally. Oh man, I don't think it's going to work, guys. I, I, so I tried a little mock-up here. I didn't get too crazy with it. I just made like a small little, small little thing here just to try it to see if it works and like it's operating the way we want, right? But it seems like they're not spawning on the dirt. I think it checks maybe like a 3x3 three three area above the dirt. Kind of like uh, spiders, like when you sp spawn in a spider. So I think it's it's seeing the piston here and it's not allowing anything to spawn in. But yeah, we were going to have water that just pushes things down into some lava just to try it here. But yeah, I don't think it's going to work. Wait a minute. Uh, they started spawning now that I removed all the planks and was tearing it down. But they spawned on the dirt with the pistons over here. So it's like it's checking the block over here and preventing them from spawning. Hmm. You know, it's a cool idea, but I don't know if it's really going to work, guys. <laughs> I've tried a couple other things here. I've tried conveyor belts. They won't spawn on conveyor belts, and they're usually so small that they fit in between them and they won't touch them. So that's kind of an issue. Uh, I was going to maybe do like a water flushing mob system. I was just about to set that up, but I'm, I'm realizing the spawn rates are just so low. There seems to be something that prevents them from spawning like more than than two up on that platform. Like these two have been here forever and there's there's no more showing up. So we would need a huge area to really get anything efficient out of this. All right. Well, I guess let's try to do some other stuff on the server here since that idea kind of fell through. Um, three new updates to our enormous legendary wall. Let's check them out. We got the Hoopa. Jolly Hoopa. Amazing. Let's click it with the bottle. 
Whoa. <laughs> that transforms it into the unbound version, which is physical instead of special. Oh, you can ride this thing, too. All right, cool. Um, it got Meloetta. This is like a weird Pokemon. It's a special attacker, but it can turn into a physical attacker if you use Relic Song, I think. Unfortunately, it's a careful nature, which isn't ideal, but, you know, we'll take it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then finally, one of the guys that's been giving me trouble. <laughs> Latios. Doesn't look very big, but I assure you it is enormous. Let's double check. Yeah, enormous, naive. That's the nature we want on it. So that is cool. Let's add them to the wall. Bam. Bam. And bam. So we didn't just get those three today either. That's That happened like over a period of a month or whatever. Like We don't get them very often. Uh, but since it's been so long since last episode, I forgot I also got this guy too. Um, Jolly Nature Terrakion. Very cool. And I bought this off of Nebris, or he gave it to me. I can't remember. A Raikou? Not a good nature on it, though. So I'm going to try to get another one of those in the future. But, you know, we'll take it for now. All right. Well, I got a couple things over here I could show you guys as well. You remember the dual XP farm thing we made a while ago? Uh, it's still working. Uh, still being used quite a bit as well on the server. Actually, more than ever. <laughs> People are here, like, all the time. If I'm... If anybody else is online, I don't even bother going here because I figure someone's going to be there. It's occupied, right? But I'm the only one on right now, so I can show you guys it. Uh, after we updated, we started getting tons of boss Pokemon, like that chandelier there. Uh, yellow bosses, red bosses, green bosses. Uh, and they give you some pretty good items. I was having trouble killing them, though, so I, I ended up making this guy. Smash! Look at this beautiful, beautiful thing. So I had an idea. Uh, this guy gets an ability called No Guard. Ensures attacks by or against the Pokemon land. So it's a guaranteed hit. Accuracy doesn't matter with this guy. And it learns Fissure. The user opens up a Fissure in the ground and drops a target in. The target fades instantly if this attack hits. So normally I think this is like a 30 percent accuracy move it almost always misses right but with this ability it's a guaranteed hit unless something's immune to this right so it's really cool for this so i put a choice scarf on this guy to make him nice and fast and he can like one shot anything <laughs> like it's a guaranteed knockout with this so this is a 110 boss like normally i'd have trouble killing this just click this we outspeed it Instant kill, guaranteed. And we get an item. So that's pretty cool. So this is pretty nice because uh, Machamp also learns knockoff. So it can it can one-shot these little guys with knockoff, no problem. Alright, and then bosses, just use Fissure. I looked this up because I was curious, like, is this a thing that people know about? And apparently, in the real game... There was never a period of time where Machamp could learn both Fissure and Mogard at the same time. Like, it could learn Fissure in the game before abilities were a thing, I think. And then when abilities came out, they banned Fissure. But for some reason, it's possible in Pixelmon. So, <laughs> uh -huh, it's, it's kind of cool, kind of cheaty. So that, that's what I've been doing here. And you'll notice with this dual XP farm thing we made, we're getting so many bosses. So cool. Um, so this is like everybody's favorite place to level up now. And recently, Kaysen gave it an update as well. He added a sorting system underneath, so all the gas tiers go here. Soul sand, torches, stuff you get a lot from these these bo uh, mobs gets sorted. Then this is like all the cool stuff that people didn't grab. I'm gonna take this if nobody wants it. Sure. And then some more extra junk. Uh, recently here, I also bred up a new important utility Pokemon for us. Uh, Reggie. He's just a Parasect, you know, nothing too exciting. <laughs> Normally our main catching Pokemon for legendaries is our Breloom. He's super strong. He's pretty resistant as well, and he's got some great moves here. False Swipe Spore, Stun Spore. 
sword stance. But the big thing is his ability allows him to constantly heal and not get affected by status moves. Uh, this guy here, though, he's like a pretty good second choice to Breloom for catching Pokemon. He also learns those four moves that I like, so that's cool. The difference is the ability on this guy. So he's got Damp. I looked for a long time to get this hidden ability, uh, but it prevents the use of self-destructing moves like Explosion. Um, so we're going to be using this guy to catch some of the remaining legendaries we need. Reggie Ice, or Reg Ice, <laughs> Reggie Steel, and Regigigas can all learn Explode and Self-Destruct. So Damp prevents that from happening. So he's going to be our key to getting these guys without wasting Master Balls. But uh, anyways, guys, I think that's going to do it for our episode today. So hopefully you enjoyed it. I mostly just wanted to give you an update on what we've been doing on the server. Those of you that enjoy the series, I know it's been a while <laughs> since the last episode. And it's probably going to be like that for the next one as well. Because like I said, we've, we've pretty much done everything in this mod pack. Uh, unless you want to see battles and breeding. we got plenty of that to go around. Um... But yeah, if you have ideas on how to beat Sten's team with these 10 beautiful Pokemon, let me know in the comments any tips and tricks. Again, this is Sten's team he's going to be using. This time around, I'm trying to be a little bit more competitive with the draft league thing we're doing. Like last time with this team, I didn't really try to counter anyone specifically. I just put generally good moves on our Pokemon and use them and wing the fights sort of thing. <laughs> this time I'm going to actually try to counter people and like change moves based on who I'm fighting and stuff, right? Um, and I'm doing damage calculations this time as well. So one thing I thought was pretty cool, apparently Mega Metacham is just insane. Um, very happy I got this guy. So Sten's big five threats, the first five on the list here. Uh, Mega Metacham gets outsped by Lopunny, but Lopunny doesn't kill Metacham, and Metacham kills Lopunny with one shot, with one high jump kick. So if he stays in with Lopunny and we attack with high jump kick, uh, Lopunny goes down. We take a lot of damage, but we live. So that's a good matchup. Uh, Kieran Black, Mega Metacham is just slightly quicker than it, and it one shots it with high jump kick as well. It's a, quite a bit faster than Heat Ran, uh, and one shots it with high jump kick. Toxapex is super slow and bulky, but we can two-shot it with Zen Headbutt, which also has a chance of flinching. <laughs> and Landris uh, T is slightly slower than Mega Metacham, and we can one-shot it with Ice Punch, um, even after getting Intimidated. I'm going to replace Bullet Punch with Fake Out, I think. Uh, so this guy is pretty crazy against Sten's team. So that's cool. The thing about high jump kick, though, like it's not a guaranteed victory for us, for sure. Because <laughs> this thing has 90 accuracy, so it can miss. It's not 100%. And if Sten uses Protect on his Pokemon, this move here, uh, while we high jump kick, it counts as a miss, and we take half our health and damage, and nothing happens to him. So he can definitely counter this guy. It's not like it's a guaranteed thing. Likewise, with his low punny, he learns high jump kick, and we can counter it by protecting with, like, our Jirachi or something. So it's going to be a fun fight. <laughs> Anyways, if you got tips and tricks, let me know. We're going to wrap up for today, so hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.